Hola a todos. Bueno, estamos en directo ahora mismo. Bueno, como ya sabéis, soy Tiago. Encantado. Muchas gracias de estar aquí otra vez con nosotros. Está, estamos aquí haciendo estas Cambly Lives, ¿vale? Para los que aún no conocen lo que, lo que es Cambly y lo que estamos haciendo aquí. Cambly es una plataforma para que puedas empezar a aprender inglés, ¿vale? Si quieres... Y lo mejor de todo es con profesores nativos. Entonces, de Estados Unidos, de Inglaterra, de Australia o lo que sea, ¿vale? Son todos nativos de países que hablan inglés. Y lo que hacemos aquí son clases, ¿vale? Vamos a hablar un poco, hablar... Antes hacemos sobre un temas específicos. Hoy vamos a hablar de un tema muy curioso, que es el tema que son los errores más comunes que todos los españoles o los latinos o argentinos o venezolanos, lo que sea, los que hablan el castellano, hacemos o, o normalmente estos errores son más comunes, ¿vale? Y hoy a, a, va a ser una cosa muy interesante porque tenemos aquí un, un, un de nuestros tutores, ¿vale? Uno de nuestros mejores tutores aquí y Nathaniel y él va, bueno, vamos a hacer todo en inglés, ¿vale? Antes de todo, vamos a hacer toda la clase en inglés y él va a presentarse un poco y hablar un poco y después podéis hacer los comentarios, envíe este enlace para tus amigos, familiares, lo que sea, para que puedas compartir con todos y, y aquí y vamos a empezar, ¿vale? Y bueno, now we're going to switch to English and um, hello everyone, hey Nathaniel, again, so how are you? I'm good, how are you? Very good, very good. So, well, tell us, tell everybody a little bit about you and um, say hello to anyone. There's a lot of people you can see here now from like Spain, Argentina. Oh, before, let, let me just say one thing. Para, eh, quiero, quiero hacer antes un, un, enviar un abrazo muy especial para uno de nuestros... Nos han enviado un, un mensaje muy bonito, que es el, el Daniel de Venezuela. ¿vale? Ha sido un, un mensaje muy bonito que nos ha enviado un, un feedback muy cariñoso y un abrazo Daniel, espero que estés aquí con nosotros si, si estás, por favor, envíe un, un, un mensaje, un comentario para nosotros ¿vale? y un abrazo muy fuerte a todos de Venezuela y estamos contigo, con todos ahí, ¿vale? Well, now, wait, come back, please present yourself, say, every, say something about you and, and present yourself with everybody Perfect, well, hello everyone, my name is Nathaniel as Diago said Uh, and I'm from the United States, uh, from the city of Washington, D.C. However, now I'm living in Madrid, in Spain, uh, and I'm learning the Spanish language. So I know that it can be difficult to learn a new language. I'm excited to be here with you guys today. Um, uh, it's, it's an honor to be invited by Cambly. I really enjoy talking with students from all over the world uh, on Cambly. So I'm excited to talk with you guys about um, some of the common mistakes Uh, when learning English. That's good. That's good. That's a very, and we have a very, like, as you said, and we were talking before, just for, for everybody to have an idea, we were talking before, I live in Madrid as well, and we just knew that we were, we are actually neighbors. We live in the same neighborhood <laughs> and we like two streets in, in between one another. And so we actually neighbors here and we never met before. So now it's a, uh, <laughs> It's an interesting thing. Sometimes you, you get, if you, if you wanted to learn English and you can see and talk with someone that is actually learning another language, and, or if you are from Spain or from Argentina or Colombia, Mexico, or whatever, you can actually talk with someone who speaks a little bit of Spanish. It helps a lot. So. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, since we're going to talk about these common mistakes that we do, I, I would like to, to start this saying if you if you have something to to come up or you have something that you, in your as as you have much more experience than I do you have something that okay. you want to share with us here uh in terms of like just getting started with some common mistakes yeah i mean actually let, let me just ask you something and um, yeah. since we we have this um We, we were talking about I am here or before we were talking about that. And there is something that sometimes we, we do talk and, and um, it's the difference between 
I am here since, or mm-hmm. I have been here. So I, I already knew there is some people, some friends of mine that said, I am here since two days. And I, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's actually correct, right? Can you explain just these terms? Yeah, of- absolutely. So yeah, in English, uh, when we're talking about an event that started in the past, but is still true today, so for example, being in a place, um, we use some the present or yeah, the present perfect. So instead of saying I am here since two weeks ago, we would say I have been here uh, since two for for two weeks or since two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so. So that so that is a, a question. You wouldn't say I am here since. You'd say I've been here since Tuesday, or I've been here since last year. Uh-huh. Um, so we need to have been in those in those situations. And, okay, so the correct form to say it, it it's I have been here since, or or you put the since, or you don't put the since. So good question. So yeah, it depends. Um, if you're saying from a particular day or particular time, so for example, Tuesday, you would say since. I have been here since Tuesday. Mm-hmm. But if you're talking about a period of time, for example, uh, five days, you would say for five days. So mm-hmm. I have been here for five days. Ah, okay. That's nice. That's a very, very good thing to know. Because we, we, sometimes we, we do that a lot and then we make this kind of, uh, these little mistakes. And, but it, it's actually normal. Uh, I mean, I wanted to say everybody for everybody again, it's normal to make mistakes when we are learning languages. Don't be ashamed or feel like, oh, well, I don't want to talk any, with anyone. I mean, it's perfectly fine to make mistakes. Don't worry about that. Anyone will judge you about it. I still make a lot of mistakes in all the languages, so it doesn't matter. Just keep talking. You will learn a lot when you make mistakes. So that's one of the things. There is one of the things that I want to... One other thing. Actually, I had already put it... I had been... I, I put it on my, on my notes here, but one student just made the same comment in the, in the comments here. And it's Stefan. Stefan, he asked about the difference between meat and meal. Meat, meal, in, in the pronunciation. So, uh, what? Ah, okay. Yeah, so, and the pronunciation? Yeah, he put it in, in the pronunciation. So, I, okay. I, my note was more about, like, the, the, the difference in the how to say meat and the meal. But um, he wanted to say the difference between meat, meal, in pronunciation. Okay. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so may, yeah. So meat uh, and meal have a very similar pronunciation, except in the final sound. Um, so meat has a t at the end. T t meat mm-hmm. uh, and meal has an a l sound. So meal. Mm-hmm. So let, let's do something. Can you can you write it down on the our chat here, and then people will actually will be will be able to see it. Yeah. How we can so, so that word there? Oh, meat. say it, say it, say it. Yeah, meat. And next word, meal. Yeah. So for everybody who are seeing now, we can actually come here, and it will be like the meat. We can click that, and it's reunirse. I'm sorry. Y aquí comida. I, I was just mm-hmm. clicking in the the link here for everybody to to see how the how a translation works here. Ah, uh, perfect. You can actually come yeah. here and, and write it down something, even if you don't know the language pretty well. So you can write it down here and then make the the translation for you. But um, um, let's see. One one more thing, Glenda. It's another student, and she she asked it here about present introduce how, how to introduce herself in present. I think it was she just put it present acts introduce. It's maybe how to present yourself in in, okay. in, in the present time. I don't know. In present tense. Yeah, present okay. tense. Okay. Okay, that's good. Um, 
Yeah, so a, a common uh, presentation uh, mm -hmm. might be something like, hello, and I'll type it as well after I say it. Hello, my name is Nathaniel. So there, we're using is in the present tense. So hello, my name is Nathaniel. And then for more information, you would continue to use the present tense. So I am from uh, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, if to, to even go on, if you wanted to talk about hobbies, I enjoy cooking, reading, and learning languages. So there you can see the verb is, am, and enjoy are all in the present tense. Mm -hmm. yeah, Does that answer the question? Do you think? I think yeah, I think so. I think so. Let me just okay. let me just say one one thing. Para para todos los que estáis en Instagram ahora asistiendo esto, por favor continuamos ahora en en YouTube, vale? Pues los que estáis en Instagram vas a YouTube y en nuestro canal. Cambly Hispanic y vas a poder continuar con todas las clases de ahí, ¿vale? Entonces, todos los de Instagram, por favor, cambiar de sitio, cambia de la página web y vas a, a YouTube, ¿vale? So, yeah, coming, coming back, coming back. <laughs> And um, let, me, let me say one, ask one more question. So, Julia, she asked about the difference between lose and miss. Ah, good question. That's a good one, yeah. right? So thanks, Julia, for the question. So lose, um, we usually use uh, lose to talk about um, an object that we had at one point, and now we don't because of an accident. So for example, uh, if I have my phone, and suddenly I can't find it, mm -hmm. I would say I have lost my phone. I have lost my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means I had it at once, uh, and now I am unable to find it. However, um, missing something would involve an event rather than an object. So, for example, um, oh, I wanted to go to the concert, but I missed it. I did not see the concert. Mm. So, miss um, tends to be for an event, whereas lose is usually for an object. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's nice. That's a very good thing to know. And one personal question now for yeah. and that I already made a little some mistakes. Okay, and it's the difference between gone and went. Ah, okay. That's, This is a good question. Um, yeah. Ooh, I'd gone and I had <laughs> went. So <laughs> this one. Um, I think it's going to depend a lot on the context. Mm -hmm. um, and I had, hmm, that is a really good this one. This is a tricky one, right? I'm sorry for that. <laughs> I so, yeah, I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of two good examples that kind of contrast the meaning. Mm -hmm. uh, so, gone in one sense is the. Um, is the past participle of, of go. So you would say, I had, or I have gone to, ooh, I, had, I had gone to the supermarket mm -hmm. to buy apples, for example. So I had mm -hmm. gone to the supermarket, and then went would just be the past simple. So mm -hmm. I went to the supermarket to buy apples. So the difference there is that gone is uh, a different part of speech. So you couldn't just say, I gone to the supermarket. You would have to say, I had gone to the supermarket. But went, you can just say by itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, it would be right to say that um, I, I went on vacations last month. It's, it's correct. Uh -huh. Ah, so that's good. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. um, do Do you know? Do you have anything that you wanted to to share with us? That, that yeah, you... yeah. I've got a I've got a few things. Um, just from my experience uh, working with students uh, from all ages, uh, there are a few common mistakes that I wanted to point out. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's good. So, so one one of them 
uh, is that in English, we always have to have the subject. Um, so in Spanish, the Spanish language is very good, very cool because the verb, uh, the way we conjugate it, tells us who is doing the action. So for example, es bueno, in Spanish, uh, we know that something is good. Mm -hmm. However, in English, we can't just say is good. We have to tell the subject. So mm -hmm. we would have to say it is good. So a common mistake that I hear is is good. Um, but we need to say in English, it is good. So in English, we always have to have the subject before the verb. Oh, that's very interesting. That's very interesting. I, I, uh, probably I made some a lot of some of those mistakes. So yeah. I, it's pretty normal. But I mean, it's yeah. it's very yeah. good to hear from that and to mm -hmm. to have someone who's much more experienced than we do. <laughs> and um, do you have any, do you have anything more that you wanted to to share? Some of the yeah, your... I have a few others. But if if you have a question from the chat that you wanna bring okay, up, yeah, I'm... we we have it here. But kick, kick, let's let's say let's move on with you. We, I'm very Perfect. curious about what you have in your, your notes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so another thing that I've noticed with a lot of students um, is uh, some students have trouble with subject verb agreement. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that the verb and the subject don't uh, line up. So for example, common mistakes might be, um, for example, when for the verb talk, uh, I talk you talk, he talks with an S. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes students might say he talk um, without saying he talks. So a lot of students make those small mistakes. For example, he tell me instead of he tells me. So we just want to be careful when we're thinking about the verbs that we're using to make sure that it agrees with the subject. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's another thing that uh, it's very, very good to know. We okay. made this slightly very... Sometimes, it, I mean, it's something that I told everybody before. It's totally normal to make mistakes. But Absolutely. Don't... Yeah, I wanted to say, I, I totally agree with you. I think making mistakes is how you learn a new language. So Exactly, exactly. So no one should be scared. <laughs> yeah, no one, no one. Please don't. Um, let's say that there's another... There's another question here from Kevin, and he wrote it. What, what's the difference between I present Nathaniel and I introduce mm -hmm. Nathaniel? Ah, very what, good. What's okay. the correct way to, to, to say that? Yeah, so thanks, Kevin, for the question. Um, so I think what is more common in English would be introduce, the verb introduce. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to introduce you to my friend, or I'd like to introduce you to my mom. I mm -hmm. think present, um, it would be understood, but I think that's more of a, a borrowing from the Spanish. Te presento a mi, mi amiga. But in, in English, introduce is more common. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so I, it will be I introduce Nathaniel mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's more common for sure. Mm, okay, okay. So one more question here. Um, use of the. It is correct to say the people. There's a. I, I know that it's, uh, we we normally the Spanish speakers normally put a lot of the in front mm -hmm. of everything, and uh, I know that. So that's right. The use of the. How is the correct way to use the? And it's correct to say the people or. And so when you say, do you mean T-H-E? Yeah, yeah. The? Yeah, okay, so good. So that is a common question. Um, do you say the or the? Um, and those two sounds are good ones to practice when learning English. Um, when you say people, you would say the people. So um, that is how you would, you would say it. However, in a lot of words that start with vowels, um, so A, E, I O U, um, you would say the. So, for example, the Earth. So, in that case, you would say the Earth. With okay. The uh, with that sound is is the most common. But we would say the with that sound with a word that starts with 
a vowel. Mm -hmm. So the apple, the iceberg, the earth. Um, those are some common examples that have the sound. And uh -huh. the people is correct. Oh, okay. The people. Yeah, I, I said the people as, as a put in the thong, right? You have to put like the people, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh. So that's, we only say that when we are actually talking with for for people, right? Like the people mm -hmm. or, or you have, you, or you can say the for any other specific topic. Yeah. So the would be the way we pronounce it for any word. That does not start with a vowel. Oh, so, okay, for all of that, okay. The, the lamp, the window, the bus, um, they all have that schwa sound, the uh sound. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's that's good to know, that's good to know. And that's, let's keep with some other questions here. And um, mm -hmm. Luis, Luis, he asks, what's the difference between have to and must? Ah, very good. Mm, that's so, a, yeah, that's a one because, that I, I I heard a lot of mistakes related to that, and sometimes I do those mistakes as well. So, yeah. So this is a good one, um, because this is, you know, probably more, uh, uh, more intermediate. Um, but really, they're very similar, um, because they have to do with obligation or advice. Um, so that means when we're telling someone advice, and we say hey, you have to clean your room, um, there's a sense that it's very important that it's done. And must mm. might even be, it's either similar to have to or even more important than have to. Must is something that 100% has to be done. So mm. um, if your mom is talking to you and she says, you have to clean your room, you can say, ah, okay. But if your mom says you must clean your room, You better clean your room. It's yeah. <laughs> have to. They're very close, but must might even be a little bit more uh, serious than have to. Ah, okay. So must is something that you you cannot like. You cannot think about do it later. You have to do it now. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So, Louis. Louis. Uh, now it's another Louis. The first which was Louis Alberto. <laughs> now it's Louis Rodriguez. And Excellent. he's asking when we must use the articles A or N. Ah, so, another good question. Yeah. So um, similar to the and the, uh, we change A and an depending on the word after. So if the word starts with a vowel, uh, we use an. So an apple, uh, an egg. Uh, uh, an igloo but if a word does not start with the vowel we use a so a house a car a dog mm. so it has to do with the word after ah uh, okay so we have to, to say that like, you cannot say a apple it's it's wrong mm. right mm. okay that's, it was incorrect yeah yeah okay so that's that's one of the things that we good to know And um, another question, it's now related with the, with the future. And um, okay. it's something that sometimes I have some difficulties with that. And um, Leo, he's asking the correct use of when we put um, the ED at the end of the word. So it will be mm -hmm. the future tense or, or the future for some specific words that you, you can actually explain for us better. And the mm -hmm. ing. So how okay. uh, what, when it's probably he's talking about the future when, well, he, he wanted to say the, the correct use of the ed and the ing at the end of the each word. Okay, so for the future, I'm not too sure, but ed and ing, um, the difference there in terms of grammar would be ing uh, is called the, the gerund or the gerundio in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, would be a, a word uh, in a specific grammatical tense to show uh, like a continuation. So for example, I am walking with the ing means that right now I am walking. 
Uh, mm -hmm. However, the ED would be used uh, for past tense, for example. Oh, so yeah. I walked. Oh yeah, I made I made, a, I made a confusion, and I'm sorry. I, I talked about future, but that's actually about past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I completely changed my mind. But I mean, yeah, continue, continue. It was my mistake, my fault. No worries, no worries. But yeah, so the difference there would be um, the grammatical tense for the ing or the ed. Mm -hmm. uh, the ing can also sometimes make a word a noun. So, for example, I like walking. I like cooking. Um, and so that means that I enjoy the act of walking or the act of cooking. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. That's good to know as well. So it's something that you are actually doing. I like walking. I, I am walking right now. I can say that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. Okay. That's and that's good. actually another another common mistake that I've noticed if I can interrupt really quick. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure, sure. So I, I think some Spanish speakers, um, when learning English, they might just say, um, I like walk or I like cook. And I think maybe that's because in Spanish you might just say, me gusta cocinar. Mm -hmm. But in English, we have to make the, um, the verb into a noun by adding the ing is one way. So, me gusta cocinar would be, I like cooking or I like to cook. So, mm -hmm. those are two ways to say that. Um, but you, you can't, you have, to, you have to say cooking or to cook. So, you have to add the to in front of the verb or ing at the end of the verb. When you're talking about your likes and your dislikes. Ah, okay. So it will be the same. It will be correct. Both of the, the sentences will be right, okay? That's, Absolutely, uh, yes. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, one, one, let me just say one question for everybody who is listening. We are offering a, a code, okay? So everybody who is actually wanting to have a free class with us in Cambly, we, we put it on, on the description, the, the code that is live, Hispanic. So you have a free class if you apply for all the new students, okay? So the new students will have a free class to, to test the platform and see how, how, it, how we use and um, how you can actually learn more English with us, okay? And um, yeah, let's, let's continue because we have a lot of questions here and people are liking very much. And, Excellent. Um, let's see. Thing on. Would would he he wanted to to know about the wood, and um, and let me see because he put it on Spanish and um, tengo una duda. Would puede usarse en el pretérito imperfecto. Por ejemplo, yo trabajaba. Podemos decir I would work. I would work. It it, it would be. I, I, we can say that it's it's correct. Yeah, so um, we would commonly use that um, in, in the conditional statements. So, for example, uh, if I were rich, I would buy a new house. Um, so there's the use of would. If mm. I were rich, I would buy a new house. Um, and so that is called the conditional, you know. I'm not rich. If I were rich, I would mm -hmm. buy a new house. I would buy a new car. Um, so that is a common use for would. Uh -huh. Okay. So it's, I can say something like, um, I, I, I would like to go out for a run. And it's correct? Yeah. That's also another common, uh, correct use. I would like to go for a run. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So it's something that you you kind of, you, you wish to do. Can it can be like that? Or? Uh, yeah, it's a com it's commonly used for I would like to do some action. That's a common um, a use for it. Mm. Okay, okay. So that's good. That's good. And let's say one more here. We have Marwa. Marwa? I don't know if I'm saying correctly. Sorry, but she asked about please the difference between farther farther. Or further? Mm -hmm. Ah, really good question. Hmm. Um, That's interesting. I want to say, I want to say that both of them have uh, have the same the same idea. So when we're using farther or further, uh, there's a distance, right? So hmm. uh, 
for example, my friend's house is, uh, let me think. Uh, <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> yeah, this is a tricky question. Farther, 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 farther. So, for example, um, China is farther away than Italy from Spain. Because we're talking about the distance uh, between between Spain and China and Spain and Italy. So China is farther away than Italy. Mm. Uh, and then further, I might say that, hmm, let me think. It might be more useful, like in a... Um, it's often used in a in a non literal way. So, if you would like to talk further about the matter, so if you would like to continue talking about something, mm -hmm. um, is a common use. If you would like to talk further, mm -hmm. um, so it's not a real distance, but it's kind of an imaginable imaginary distance. Uh, Whereas farther okay. is usually used for a real distance. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, that's that's interesting. That, that, I, I, I didn't know I didn't know about that. So that's a very good thing to know. Yeah. And I think a lot of native English speakers we will use further and farther, um, maybe the same. Mm -hmm. But I think that might be a good a good simple description. But there's probably a lot more behind that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, for anyone who's actually learning, we can keep with the basics. We don't need to do exactly. <laughs> all the, exactly. the the meanings of yeah. one word because sometimes we can actually use one word for a lot of things so it will complicate yeah. a lot what we wanted to do yeah and um let's say here we what's the meaning about what's the meaning of the the king lotter king lotter he's asking <laughs> hello king and uh, he's asking, what's the meaning of the expression which ends in which which ends in do? Oh, sorry. So he wanted to say it related with do, do. So um, he, probably what I mean. Let me say. Let me try if I understood that. It's probably what when when we're saying like, oh, you know what, you know what I found out though. It's blah blah blah. I think it's that uh -huh. expression that he wanted to do, the though. Oh, it's, I just typed it, is that what he's saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, he wrote so, it as, okay. he wrote it as T-H-O-U. But, yeah, I mean. That, oh, did he write it as that? T-H, oh, yeah, yeah. So that's the difference okay. between, I, I thought he was really talking about though, but it's. What, what's the difference? You can explain me better because that I don't know. Yeah, so I've, I've written three different words here. Um, the first one is though, mm -hmm. the second one is thou, and the third one is though, but spelled in an incorrect way, but it's you, if you see it in a lot of text messages. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll talk about the first one. Though, um, it's something that we kind of tag on to the end of our sentences sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, ooh, what, I can't think of an example. Uh, so, for example, if you're asking a question, you might say, and you want more of an answer, you might say, why, though? You know, you want, mm -hmm. why, why, though? So it's a tag. And a lot of times in text messages, people will write it, ask, why, though, uh, with the third spelling. Mm -hmm. although it's incorrect but we still see it a lot uh -huh. so why though you'll see it a lot but it's technically not correct uh though spelled t-h-o-u-g-h is the correct one uh, okay. um, and then this word here thou mm -hmm. is actually like an older form of the word you so mm -hmm. sometimes um in older texts we see thou um and thou means you Oh, that's good. I didn't know about that. Thanks, King, for that. It's <laughs> I really didn't know about that. 
So DAO, okay. it's the the old. It's it's something more. Um, uh, how can I say? It? It's more formal. It was still use it in a formal way, or we um, don't use it anymore. Ish. We don't really use it anymore in formal situations um, or informal situations. However, in like ancient, or not even ancient, but Shakespeare texts, for example. So older mm. English, or maybe in the Bible, you might still see thou. Um, but today, in formal English and informal English, you is, is the correct term. Ah, uh -huh. okay. That's very interesting. Very, very interesting. <laughs> And um, let's see one more here. Toriach, she's asking, or he actually, sorry, but uh, what's the difference between might and may? Okay, so good. So here's another um, kind of when we're determining probability of something. Mm -hmm. um, there might be different degrees. So something definitely going to happen and something definitely not going to happen. And might and may are closer to something might happen, or something is definitely going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, there's still a chance that they won't. Um, might is probably closer to definitely than may. So if I say, oh, there are some clouds in the sky, it might rain, that might mean there's a 60% chance, for example. Mm. Um, however, if it's kind of sunny, I might say, oh, it may rain today, so maybe there's only a 50% chance. So might is a little bit more probable than may, but they're both unsure a little bit. Mm. That's very interesting. There's a lot of very good questions, right, that people are asking. Yeah, these are good questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one more time, thank you everybody for all those questions. We're having like a lot of those. We're trying to 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 answer everybody, but I mean, keep going, keep doing those questions because it's good, and we still have some time to to answer some more. If it's okay for Than and Nathaniel, we can still answer for more. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So let's see the one one more here. Let's um, Samuel. And uh, he wanted to, to know more related to the, he, he asked, he asked about the, the might again, but he wanted to, he wanted the difference between the could and can, might, could, can. Mm -hmm. So again, um, these are really good questions. So they're all kind of, so they're all modal verbs uh, and there's a different, degree here. So we're talking um, might, could, and can are kind of close. So it's very, they're very similar in meaning. Yeah. Um, might, could, and can. Ooh. Uh, let me think. So can and could are probably more closely related and may and might are kind of closely related. Um, so for example, um, I'm trying to think. A lot of times we can use can and could interchangeably. So for example, can you get me a glass of water? Could you get me a glass of water? Have the same meaning. Mm -hmm. um, however, maybe one difference might be present tense versus past tense. So today uh, is, is nice. I can go for a walk. Yesterday was nice in the past. I could go for a walk. So mm -hmm. can is present tense. Could is past tense. Okay. And then what was the other one? Was it may or might? Might, might. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When yeah it's so might, could, and can, which is what he asked. Yeah. So again, might, it can also be used for the example I gave earlier. Can you get me a glass of water? Could you get me a glass of water? Might you get me a glass of water? They all have the same meaning. Mm -hmm. However, um, like I said earlier, we would use might and may to predict the future. Um, whereas can and could are things that are, that are more definite. So I can speak English. I can 
uh, cook dinner. Mm -hmm. These are things that I'm able of doing. Uh -huh. um, I, I might be able to cook dinner. It's unsure. So that's maybe a difference between can, could, and might. Ah, that's good. That's good. Very good. Uh, the questions I, I thought like people were, will be able like kind of insecure about sending questions, but they actually are sending a lot of very good <laughs> questions. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, they're for tough the questions. questions. Yeah, yeah, right. They're putting you on test. I think all of us yeah. here. <laughs> And la yeah, let's see one more here. Like Jose, Jose, he's asking. Um, he'd like to know about the uses of shawl. Shall we go for a run? It's correct to say that? Yeah. So um, it's definitely correct to say that. But I will admit it's not very common. Um, however, like, like he says, shall we is a common phrase. But it's kind of joking and informal. So in, a, in formal English, you probably won't hear shall a lot. Um, but in informal English, you might hear, oh, Shall we dance? You know, it's kind of a fun, fun way. The more common way of saying that would be, should we, is more common. Mm -hmm. So, should we go to the store today? Shall we go to the store today? Both of them have the same meaning, but should is more common uh, in modern English. I think shall might come from uh, older English. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Do you know if there's any? If people in the UK, for example, if they use shall or... Ah, that is a good question. And perhaps uh, perhaps you have a point. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, mm -hmm. uh, but in the United States, at least, uh, should would be more common. But now that you mention it, maybe in Britain and in the UK, shall we would be a little bit more common. But to an American, it might sound kind of formal oh, or okay. like strange. Oh, okay. Yeah, I asked that actually because I was I was watching I, I watched a movie uh, the other day. I forgot the name of it, but it wasn't in English. They, they actually recorded that. It was from the UK. So I, I heard about like I, I heard a few shall shall we go to yeah. that? It's a it's a different in pronunciation, and I asked if the, it's a normal thing there or if at least if you I, and now we know actually from that. At least in the United States, you don't know you don't use it any, at least nothing mm -hmm. super super, like just to make fun yeah, or confident. to be informal or something like that. That's, yeah. it, that's interesting yeah. because it's it's different. The, the English that you say that you talk and uh, the English that sometimes we used to hear a lot from the United States is different from the English that we hear and and we listen from the UK or from Australia, Absolutely. for example. So it's very yeah. different pronunciation yeah. and accents and um, that's a very good that's a very good do, do you have any any more things that you wanted to share any from from your notes or something that you think it's uh, important for us to know as well um let me see uh in terms of pronunciation i think one of the most difficult things for spanish speakers when learning english is the sound um so for example Uh, the country that we live in, Spain, um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of Spanish speakers, uh, they start it with kind of like an uh sound, so Spain. Mm -hmm. For yeah. student, they may say student, so an uh sound at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I understand that it's really hard for a lot of native Spanish speakers to, um, to start a word with that uh sound. But I would encourage anyone who's learning the English, uh, learning English, who wants to improve their pronunciation and accent, um, words that start with S, try and focus on starting with just the S sound uh, without the uh sound. So Spain, student, mm -hmm. uh, snake, yeah. study. Those are some, some common things that I hear. But again, anyone who speaks English will understand you. But I know a lot of students focus on their pronunciation. So that's a, some good advice I have for anyone who's hoping to improve pronunciation. Yeah, definitely. Because it's a, it's a very tricky thing. Because I, I, I'm not sure, but I'm, I actually don't... I don't, I don't, I don't come, in, you know, come in my mind that words that start with a, 
with the E and then or S H in in Spanish. I'm not sure if you have if we have some. But and then we tend to put a E in front of everybody. That's true. That's that's very true. So Spain, yeah. so it's really a Spain or a student. Exactly. And, exactly. And it's very different. Yeah. And I I learned that when one of one of my teachers when I was younger, she she used to to say to me a lot to to try to imitate a a snake. So it and exactly, say the yeah. s and how it like it actually imitate the snake s snake and Spain mm -hmm. say this. S It it will be funny in yeah. the beginning. You you look in the mirror and say like, oh, what why am I doing that? But it actually helps a lot. So it's a, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a really good a really good piece of advice. And I tell some of my students that too. And you feel silly because you feel like you're over exaggerating, but it does it does help. Yeah, definitely, it helped a lot. It helped a lot. And do you have any more things that you wanted to share in terms of pronunciation or, or anything more? Um, maybe one more thing that might be helpful for, helpful for some people, because I think it's tricky, um, is that in Spanish, uh, you have double negatives. And so what do I mean by that is, for example, no hay nadie aquí. In Spanish, um, You have no and nadie, two negatives. However, in English, we don't have that. The proper way to say that would be, there is no one here. Or, there mm. isn't anyone here. So, here's the key. So, in the first one, there is no one here. No is only mentioned once. There isn't anyone here. It's mentioned once. However, if I said, there isn't no one here. We have two negatives, and it doesn't make sense. It's not grammatical. So I think that's one common mistake I've seen. Sometimes my students will be like, there isn't no one. And I have to say, oh, it's actually there isn't anyone. Mm -hmm. So just something to keep in mind. Um, sometimes the literal translations from Spanish to English uh, don't always work the way we want them to. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's that's very true. We tend to do these literal translations and... Uh... Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. So exactly, I mean, it helps in the beginning. Everybody do that in any language. Yeah. We do that. It's normal, as 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 we said, it's normal to do that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. as as you're starting to to move, uh, growing your level and putting your level up more and more, it's um. I think we have to tend not to translate literally. And mm -hmm. start to understand more what's the the meaning of each word. I think it's a very interesting yeah. thing to do. But again, it's something that we all do, and I still do. And yeah, it's, it's perfectly yeah. fine. Yeah, there's no worries, no embarrassment when we're when learning new languages. Not at all, not at all. <laughs> Actually, it's an opportunity I think to to talk with new people to know more cultures and make more friends and I mean it's it's nice and sometimes it's a very interesting thing for me I don't know it's when for you as well but I, I would like to share something that sometimes when I am not speaking in my native language I sometimes I, I woke up one day and then I okay that I can say anything perfectly I, I go out on the streets and I talk with anyone and um mm -hmm. I, it's just perfect. I can say anything at any time and I can respond and say whatever, have a perfectly fine conversation with anyone. And there is one day that I just cannot speak anything. It's just blocked. I don't know if it happens. Probably it will happen, yeah. happen more with Absolutely. people as well. So it's perfectly fine. I don't know if it happens to you as well since you're le learning Spanish. So Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, we it's it's, it's normal. I mean, we we are all learning always, so we're in the learning mode. Let Let's see if I have more questions here. Let's say, um, I got got two questions. What is the thought thought out? Is that yeah thought out? 
or th out? No, throughout. Throughout. Okay. Give me that. Throughout. So what is throughout? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that. And uh, so th yeah, say that, and then let's say that the second question that he has. There's the somewhere somewhere that he's asking that as well. Okay. So yeah, throughout. It's a good question because um, it's challenging to explain, but um, throughout would mean during a particular time. Um, so during a particular time. So for example, uh, you might see in a history book throughout, uh, throughout history, um, humans have enjoyed having dogs as pets, for example, throughout history. So that means that from the beginning of time until today, so mm -hmm. during this time period, so during uh, throughout history from the beginning until today, so throughout kind of says, you know, from this time until this time, this has continued. Mm. If that helps. Yeah, yeah, I think it helped a lot throughout. Exactly. <laughs> and the second question that he had, it was the difference of whole and all. The whole thing and all and all. I think it's that what he means. So whole and all. I just sent them in. Yeah. The chat. Yeah. 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 So really good question again because here um, we're talking about the entirety of things. So that means uh, the in, the entire thing. So mm -hmm. for example, um, uh. But the, the way we use them are different. So, for example, if I say the whole class uh, did their homework, wow, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. The whole class, that means <laughs> that every person in the class did their homework. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to use all, I would have to say all of the class or all of the people did their homework. So um, the difference there is... Uh, whole is working for kind of in terms of parts, so the whole class, whereas all of the class is referring to the individuals. So I could say half of the class did their homework, or almost all of the class did their homework. So whole is talking about kind of sections or parts, and all is talking about individuals. But if I say the whole class did their homework and all of the class did their homework, I'm saying the same thing. Mm. That's nice. That's very good. Very good explanations. And um, well, let's let's go then for our last question here from from the right. from the everybody who is still listening and is still here. There's a lot of people. Thank wow. you very much again. And um, let's say let's take one last question here. And Marwa, Marwa, let's, she is asking about the difference between a while and a while. Oh, that's a good one. That's good. Uh, a while. Hmm. Okay. Let me think. A while. I want to say and a while? That is a really good question, and I might actually have to look that one up. Yeah, right, it's a very tricky. Mara, you, you are asking very tricky questions. Because <laughs> I can't, hmm, it's been, let me see. Um, a while. Can, can I say like something that I, I have, I, I, I went out for a while it is mm -hmm. it is correct yeah I went out for a while uh, would be correct for a while um, and I want to say here we have while is uh, kind of like a period of time and a while might be like an adverb mm -hmm. um, is that right let me think. So, uh, that, that was tricky. That was very tricky, Mara. I, 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 yeah, I think that's tricky. Yeah. 
but that one that one I might have to look up after to come up with a, a better explanation. But um, mm -hmm. a while like while is a period of time. So I went out for a while. I went out for five minutes, whereas mm -hmm. a while together. Um, I can't even think of an example. I read. Mm, I can't think of an example. That one's on me. That one okay. I need to look up. <laughs> that, that's one thing that probably we, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to think about that and uh, we, we will write it down a, an article explaining that. That would be nice. Perfect. And then we yeah. can explain that better and then we can post in our Instagram or, or in our on our blog that we are developing. So what if you uh, listen to us right now, we are developing our blog. So soon or later we will have it. And... Uh, and yeah, well, pro that could be one of the first things that we can do, and yeah. write it down as more article to explain the difference between those two. Perfect. Yeah, sorry, I can't answer it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. So, well, guys, um, I think we already had very, very good explanations of, from a lot of diff difficult topics. I, we, we thought it would be kind of easier, but you guys pushed us a lot. And um, yeah. I wanted to say thank you, everybody, again. I, I will give now the, the opportunity of Nathaniel to, to say something. And uh, I would say one thing as well, because I, I heard um, Anna, Anna he, she's asked here how she... Can, I, I would say in Spanish, okay? So, ella, ella ha puesto aquí que quería cómo salir del nivel básico. Entonces, Ana, si estás nos oyendo ahora, eh, nosotros estamos con un código de promoción, entonces para todos los que queráis empezar a, a tomar clases en inglés con profesores nativos, en Cambridge, en Cambridge tenemos esto, ¿vale? lo que ofrecemos, queremos que todos podáis aprender inglés de la mejor manera posible. Entonces, estamos con un código promocional, con, es solo poner Live Spanish, vas a encontrar todo aquí en la descripción de, del vídeo, y vas a poder acoger una clase ¿vale? gratuita para testar y a ver si te gusta o no y así poder coger y ver cómo salir de este nivel básico ¿vale? entonces una, una, algo que yo puedo decir es que si puedes escoger por ejemplo alguien como Nathaniel que habla un poco de, de, del castellano también está aprendiendo entonces podéis compartir ideas podéis escribir aquí al lado en nuestro chat como podéis ver aquí y si no entiendes una cosa u otra, entonces esto es muy bueno. Entonces, Ana, para, para ti que, que está ahí queriendo aprender y salir del nivel básico, puedes coger esta, este código promocional, Live Spanic, y poner ahí en nuestra plataforma y, y tomar una clase gratuita, ¿vale? Entonces, vamos llegando al final. De verdad, muchísimas gracias otra vez. Voy a... a dar otra vez la palabra al Nathaniel para que pueda decir las últimas palabras. So Nathaniel, say something to us. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to, I just wanted to echo what you said. Um, thank you to everyone who is tuning in or everyone who watches in the future. Uh, you had some great questions, um, and it's stuff like this that I really like to talk with my students about on Cambly. So. If you want to make a call with me, I think my link is included um, in the information for this video. I'd love to talk with you more and um, help you as you're learning English. And as I mentioned, as Tiago mentioned, I, I speak some Spanish. So if you need help, if you're at a basic level and you need some Spanish, like you need to use some Spanish, I'm more than happy to help you uh, raise your level for whatever your needs are. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for having me and thanks for all of your questions once again. That's good. That's good. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Entonces, para, para lo que podéis, como él ha dicho, que tiene el, el enlace de su perfil en, nuestro, en Cambly, el perfil de, de Nathaniel está aquí abajo también en la descripción. ¿vale? Entonces, podéis buscar ahí y coger una clase directamente con él. ¿vale? Entonces, podéis utilizar este, este código promocional que os, eh, ya tenéis ahí, el Live Spanish, y coger una clase con, con Nathaniel. ¿Vale? Entonces, a todos, muchísimas gracias otra vez y nos vemos pronto, ¿vale? Un abrazo. Chao, chao a todos. Chao, muchas gracias.